Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to discuss the DJI drone to phone application. Because in the last three days, I've gotten well over 500 phone calls and emails and text messages from concerned flyers all over the world asking me what it's about. And I understand there's a lot of confusion out there about why the application was written in the first place and really what it's intended to do. So I thought, I can't possibly get back to everybody individually. I'd love to do that, but there aren't enough hours in the day. And I'm not a huge fan of doing a cut and paste response where everybody gets the same answer. So I thought, let me take a breath, sit down, do a little bit of research, try to understand exactly what this application's intending to do. I've got friends over at DJI, I've spoken to them. And then I'll sit down like I'm doing now and put a clip together to explain what this application is and what it isn't. Because the rumors are flying, boards are lit up about it, there's a lot of people that are really ratcheted up over this particular application. And I put the title out as why this could be a really good thing, and I do believe it is. And if you give me a couple of minutes, I'll explain why I think that's true. So for starters, a couple of housekeeping things. The application is not live. It's written but it's not been released to the wild. Nobody has it, the public doesn't have it. And DJI at this point has no intention of releasing it ever in its current form. What they've done is essentially built what's called a proof of concept, which is a product that you show to a customer, in this case, the FAA, on what's possible with existing technology. So in the case of this application, DJI read the NPRM that's out right now. And if you're not familiar with that, I've got a link below where you can go read it. And I've got a link below where you can comment on it as well. But essentially what the FAA has done is issued a new set of rules that they want to implement that talk about remotely identifying a UAV while flying. And what DJI did with this application was adhere to the standards that the FAA is mandating with this new proposal, knowing they could dial it back from there. And I'll get into some of those specifics in a minute. But the application today satisfies the broadcast requirements that the FAA has gotten that proposal. Now, whether you agree with that or don't agree with that, the application is really just exhibiting what's possible with current technology. Now, one of the reasons I think that's a good thing is because it means all the drones we already own, and we all own a bunch of them, and they're really expensive, will work with this application because they're using a Wi-Fi topology to pick up that information. And all the drones use some form of Wi-Fi to communicate between the drone and the controller. So DJI is showing you that with the drones that are in the sky today, they can determine the remote ID over a simple Wi-Fi connection to a standard cell phone. It doesn't require a brand new transmitter or kinds of expensive changes to the drone, which are gonna ultimately cost us more when we buy that next generation drone. So reason number one, I think it's a good thing is because the drones we're flying today can easily be adopted. Now it's DJI today, but it's an international standard. These guys could do it, Autel could do it, Parrot could do it. So it gives us the ability to use what we're using and still adhere to that broadcast. Now, if we get a little deeper into it, I know people out there don't want to remotely identify their drone at all. And for me, I don't think it's that big a deal. I'm going to go on record, as I've said before, I think remote ID is a good thing. I don't think it's at all a big deal to ask a pilot who's sharing the national airspace with other pilots and consumers and airplanes to identify their drone. To me, it's no different than having a license plate on my car. Can you imagine for a minute if you had a car with no license plate on it and you were driving around like a crazy person and somebody saw you and wanted to report you as a bad driver, they'd have no way of identifying the car. So it's the exact same thing here. It's a digital license plate that kind of anonymously identifies the drone the general public doesn't know who's flying it. They're not asking for your name to be broadcast in your home address or phone number. What they're asking you for is to broadcast a remote ID. Now that's still being defined of what that looks like, but let's say for example, it's a 12 digit number. And to find out who that 12 digit number is related to, just like a license plate, only the law enforcement people can do that. The consumers can't. Now the part that scares me about this application is that the way it's written today, again, the FAA has suggested this, it not only gives law enforcement the ability to look at the drone and tell the ID of the drone, where it's been flying, and where the pilot's standing, I think that's a dangerous thing to turn over to the public. And again, my conversations with DJI is they have no intention of releasing this. They're just trying to build an application that adheres to the standards the FAA is asking for. I would suggest strongly that if you have any problems with the way the remote ID proposal is gonna be implemented, you hit the link below, go to the FAA website, and I know a lot of you have done it already. It's a very vibrant community and, and good on you for uh, already commenting, but go to the website, put your comments in there, and don't be one of those guys that goes, oh, they're never gonna read them, they're not gonna pay attention to it. I promise you they read them. Whether the body of comments are good or bad, they're gonna look at that and go, yeah, maybe we did overstep with some of these regulations. But go there and complain about that. But you can't beat me up for reporting it. You can't really even beat DJ up for, DJI up for building the application because 
they're out ahead of the curve. And, and I think that's something that should be championed. And I know I'm gonna get grief for saying, oh, DJI's ahead of the curve, but I love this company because they're, they're looking two years out and four years out, not only on technology, but on regulations, and they're trying to be accommodating. So if you buy the DJI drones today, and you can buy anybody's drone, but if you buy their drone, know that they're already out there trying to get this remote ID identification system sorted out. The other guys, are catching up. So all the other guys that are kind of keeping their heads down right now about this remote ID proposal, what happens tomorrow if you own somebody else's drone that can't do this kind of broadcast? It's not a good drone to own at that point. You're gonna have to buy a drone that can do it. So these guys can do it. All these guys can do it as well with tweaking their software. So we'll get into that in a little bit. All right, so the two things that scare me about the NPRM, which me personally, I would have a problem with, and this is what my comment's based on, is number one, there are two parts to your broadcast ID. The first has to do with broadcasting it from the drone. And that's exactly what the drone to phone application looks to take charge of, is it allows you to figure out whose drone it is, flying it, and where they're standing in the field. The second part of the NPRM, which I really have a problem with, is that they also want you to broadcast that same information over a cellular network to a central database that's gonna be stored for an indeterminate period of time. Now, they said six months, but they could change that. But in general, I don't like the idea of my data going into a database that can be scanned later by who knows who to maybe issue me a ticket for just crossing some invisible line in the sky. So for me, I think there's a fine line between remote ID and surveillance, and I think you collecting that information, putting it in a database, puts me in the surveillance space. And there's no other hobby out there that they keep an eye on you when you're doing things. They sort of let you go about your business, and if you're a goofball and do something bad, you should be punished. And I think having the broadcast portion of it is a good thing. I think having that transmit portion of it is a bit overstepping on the FAA site. But let's pretend for a second that enough of us say, we don't want the transmit thing for normal hobbyist flyers that are within visual line of sight, and they decide not to implement that, that still leaves the broadcast ID, which is exactly what this DJI drone to phone application is looking to satisfy with current technology, no increase in cost of development of the product, and it gives everybody the information they need. Having said that, today the application is available, or gonna be available based on the mandate from the FAA to everybody, and I think that's a problem, and that's where I differ with the FAA. So the two things I'm complaining about are number one, don't record the data. Don't make me transmit the data. Unless I'm flying 107 and I'm near a building or New York City that I've got special waivers to fly, I'm totally fine transmitting the data to then. But if I'm a hobbyist flyer and I'm flying over Lake Yahoo, you shouldn't have to have my information in a database someplace. So knock off that transmit for all of us hobbyists that are flying within visual line of sight, following all the rules, and don't need a waiver. The second thing that I've got a problem with is the FAA's mandate that whatever application the law enforcement has, the public has. I don't think it's a good idea to have Joe Public look at a drone and go, okay, I see that drone up there. I don't like the fact that he's flying it. I want to go find that guy. That gets dangerous because if they can find where I am, now I've got an aggressive citizen on my hands that wants to handle things on his own. And I think when you put that kind of power in the hands of a citizen, you're creating a vigilante. What I'd rather have happen is if you're broadcasting that information and if down the road they decide to release this to the public, only let the public pick up what the digital license plate is that's being broadcast. So if I've got an anonymous 12 digit number on there and I'm broadcasting that to everybody, they'll pick up that license plate number because some creepy guy's been hovering over their pool for the last three hours. They can use that license plate number, call the local police and say, I've got this dark drone over my pool for the last three hours. Here's the guy's license plate, just like with the car. I want you to investigate it. The police can look up the connection between that license plate and what the FAA registration information is, and then come knock on my door and say, Rick, why are you flying your drone over somebody's pool for three hours? I think that's a reasonable thing to do. And as a pilot, and I know the vast majority of you pilots that watch this channel are responsible pilots that put you in a good place because you're not gonna do bad stuff. And the guys that are doing bad stuff are ruining this hobby for us because every time some knucklehead decides to fly a drone over a prison, the news channels pick it up and all of us have to deal with our cousins and uncles and, and family members and neighbors saying, oh, I hate those drones, I heard they're flying into prison. So identifying the drone with an anonymous number that's broadcast from it, that law enforcement can use to find the person breaking the rules and the public can use to report somebody that's doing something creepy, I don't think is a bad thing. And that's exactly what this drone to phone application is designed to do. So I know I covered a lot today, but I want to reemphasize again, DJI didn't build this to release it to the public to create a furor. They built it to adhere to the FAA regulations that were out and are still out. And they do a good job of using existing technology that doesn't cost us any money, that's easily implemented, that any law enforcement official has a smartphone can use it. And again, if they push out the part, if the FAA mandates they push out the part in the public access to that data, limit it to the digital license plate, which is an anonymous number 
that they can report to the police that, hey, this scary guy is flying over my pool and scaring my kids. I think that's reasonable as well. So I know I'm pretty opinionated in this, but I wanted to explain exactly what the application is designed to do and what it isn't to do. So don't, don't fear it. Don't flame me, I didn't invent it. Don't flame DJI, they're just following a mandate. If you wanna flame anybody and you're upset about this, and I know a lot of you are, and rightly so, get on that link below, go to the FAA site, and say to them, look, I'm a responsible flyer, I think you're overreaching, and my suggestion would be complain about the network transmission. There's no reason they have to hang on to that data. There's no other hobby out there that tracks me and eliminate the ability of the public to see that broadcast ID beyond the point of just the remote ID, just the digital license plate. Take the ability for the public to see where I'm standing with my drone because, and I know this sounds dramatic, but up to this point, no one's been harmed with a drone. Not seriously. There's been no airplane inclusion there's, or introductions. There's been no people on the ground hurt by them. I think the minute you publish this where Joe Citizen can get upset about a drone flying over his backyard and find the public, I think that's where the trouble starts. And I just don't think it's a good thing in general. So that's just my opinion. You guys have your own opinions, but you know, you can comment to DJ if you want, but really where it's gonna be effective is go to the website for the FAA. So I hope you found this helpful. And again, I know I'm gonna get accused of being a DJI fanboy, but as an engineer, I follow the tech. I think they're way ahead on the development of their technologies, but I love that they're a company that's looking forward on regulations as well. They spend an awful lot of time and watch Washington, a lot of time and treasure going through, you know, straightening these things out and talking to the FAA, trying to make people aware of what's going on. They're really advocating for the hobby in so many ways. And I have to support somebody like that. These guys are stepping up. Lattel going to step up. Everybody's affected by it, but I need these big guns to be out there advocating for my hobby. And the last thing I'll say, I know there's a lot of people that are saying, Rick, you're out of your mind. The minute you give an inch of your freedom away, it's anarchy. We're going to be communist country at that point. They're going to take everything. I don't believe that's the case. I love flying. I enjoy the hobby. I think the rule changes are minor. I can live with them. If you're asking me, I've got to identify my drone like I identify my car. I'm totally fine with that. I don't think that's too much to ask. Some of the things you're proposing are over the line and I'm complaining about those. But in general, the attitude that kills me about the public is no matter what technology you develop, somebody's going to complain about it. No matter what application you put out, what kind of drone you build, there'll always be a couple of people that go, well, if it just did this, it would be really cool. And I listen to a lot of music, and one of the songs that I love so much has a line in it, and the line goes, you can judge the whole world on the sparkle you think it lacks, which means complain about everything or just fly and enjoy the day. These are wonderful machines. It's a fantastic hobby, not only for you, but for your family to be outside in the fresh air flying. Enjoy the hobby. And if you've got complaints about this, hit the FA link below, go to their site, let those comments be heard. And you know, I'll keep you updated as things change. I'm in contact with all the main companies out there. But right now, I don't think fear this application at all. I think it could be a good thing for the hobby. And I'm a fan of it. So that's where I stand on that. So thanks an awful lot for watching. Hopefully you found this clip helpful. And until next time, happy flying.